son, why'd you make this? Coffee, call it a day, man. Trapaholics mixtape, dang son, why'd you make this? <laughs> I'm done. Babel Scatter, Leland Phil Pot, Agatha Trap Flip, heard it here first. I'm done. All right, what's up, everybody? As you heard, we had a remix to Agatha All Along. If you are keeping up with the MCU's latest TV show, WandaVision, which is on Disney Plus right now. It does end this Friday. It's the very last episode for you guys to catch up. Boy, that remix. Agatha all along. Thank you, AOS Podcast. I hit you up on the text message, and I think I fell back into a time slip of the old buck. If you guys don't know, that's his handle right there. Like, I sent him a text message, and it's been 24 hours. <laughs> but the remix is nice. And... WandaVision, if you guys have not watched, amazing. The first three episodes kind of confuse the hell out of you. It's almost like you're watching Murder, She Wrote. And you remember the show being about, you know, an old lady that solves crime, but the first two episodes about her trying to catch some dick. And you're like, whoa, I missed that. But you needed that. And then when you get to episode four, it all starts to make sense. It's, it's great storytelling. It's many movie series. Um, I've loved it. And remember, I think two weeks after WandaVision ends, we're going to get Falcon and Winter Soldier, and that shit looks good. Uh, and then we got Loki. We've got a lot of other stuff coming. But today is the day that we hit comics, because when this episode drops, if you're not watching it live and you're listening, uh, I always record the show live. This is it's 4.50, so around 4.30-ish on Sundays. Um, the show always drops every Thursday for you guys to listen to the audio version on Podbeam, Spotify, Stitcher, Apple Podcasts, wherever the hell you listen to stuff. Ah, there's a reply. <laughs> uh, oh, ooh, okay, okay, okay. I will text you back later, sir. Thank you. Uh, <laughs> and um, so uh, every Thursday the show drops anywhere that you want to listen to podcasts, any major podcast platform. And mine are, I'm there. I am there waiting for you guys uh, just to climb up in your ears. If you read the uh, title, it's Oh, the Agatha of It All, Blue Marvel, Infinite Frontier, The Snyder Cut, and more. Today is our comics episode. If you're new to the whole the realm, the fabricated realm of the Elijah Bailey show, each week is a different week and we cover different topics. So the beginning of the month, the very first week is comics. The second week of the month is anime. Third is video games. And the fourth week is the Bailey Bugle. And if we have a fifth week, we dive into just something specific that I love, which I feel like we're getting ready to dive into Russian. Russian or I don't have them with me. I got something to show you guys. I can't tell you about it because it just doesn't make sense. But there's a lot of stuff that we do on that, that fifth week. Uh, I digress. We are into comics, and there is a shit ton of comics. I'm going to try to change everything. You know what? Why have I not done this? I've got the new setup. I've got the gear here. Let me log into this real quick. That way I can change the scenes professional-like. And it's not like you're getting to see behind the scenes right now so don't don't mention it but let me log into and what we're going to do is go into our comic book uh, recommendations for the month and there this is what i want to say the things that marvel has coming out i enjoy i enjoy a lot but the things that dc has coming out is it's very nasty it's very nice it's very mm, 
It just it just feels good to be in your hands. It feels good to be in front of your eyes. Um, God damn. There we go. Remote control. Connect. Relink. God damn it. Okay, so mine is not. Uh, we're going to have to do this old school. Let's go. Oh, there it is. There it is. Boom. Okay. So let's head into comic books. As we start every single month, uh, we start with Marvel Comics because, you know, it's Marvel. And we've been hearing this name a lot uh, on WandaVision. Uh, a lot of people didn't know about it. In the one thing I do love about WandaVision, what the MCU is doing, uh, Wanda's mother uh, created S.W.O.R.D. So we have S.W.O.R.D. Issue number four is going to be the one that I want you guys to check out first. Uh, the, uh, let's see, writer Al Ewing, art and cover by Valero Shitty. <laughs> and the variant cover is to be announced, but the synopsis is uh, we have a problem. The mutants are dying. Their island is dying. Earth itself is dying. All hope for the humanity as a species lies in Protocol V. Protocol V isn't going to work. 32 pages, rated T plus, $3.99. Um, one thing that we're going to talk about, the Sword issue number four series is going to take place in the King and Black series, which, if I do have to say something, Marvel has been hitting this King and Black series very hard. It's really, really cool. One of the series I know I listen to, Fat Man Beyond, and Mark Bernard is actually writing, um, and it's about, God, what is his name? It, uh, basically a soldier that took the super soldier serum. It went horribly wrong. It made him into a kaiju, except for he's got red, white, and blue on his chest. And it's going to be about the dilemma of him only being able to say like USA, but trying to figure out like, why am I in this dilemma? You know, he's in this torture and be like, fuck it. I'm just going to fuck shit up. So that's coming. Uh, I will get the, I will post it on the Facebook pages and everything else. So you guys can check that out. Cause that shit was sounding amazing. But the King and black series has been all over Marvel and it is stretched uh, through Venom, Spider-Man, everything else. So that is what they do. They do big, overarching global inner superhero type arcs uh, i think morbius is even in in this so check that out make sure to kind of follow that in marvel but the other thing that i thought was really cool was uh, what we have next on the list is beta ray bill um and there's been a couple things going on with thor and beta ray bill and talk of beta ray bill being in thor love and thunder which we'll see in 2022 but Beta Ray Bill, issue number one of five, Daniel Warren Johnson is the writer, and he is also the artist and the cover artist. So the second most famous wielder of Mjolnir, the right-hand man of the God of Thunder, and now a warrior without the, his best weapon. Beta Ray Bill is tired of playing second fiddle to Thor, and Bill's famous hammer, Stormbreaker, recently destroyed at the new All-Father's hands. Tensions are higher than ever. The Corbinite must strike out yeah, the, the Corbinite must strike out in search of a new weapon and a new dynasty. Assuming he can fist defeat the nullified Fing Fang Foom, writer Daniel Warren Johnson of uh, Extremity and Murder Falcon, and colorist Mike Spicer take Beta Ray Bill on a journey beyond the shadow of the god. Plus, the oversized issue contains an exclusive uh, conversation between Johnson and Beta Ray Bill's creator, the legendary Walter Simonson. 40 pages, rated T plus $4.99. Gotta pick that up. Now, if you go to comicbook.com, uh, I think even GameSpot had a section on this because uh, we're going to move right into DC Comics. Infinite, uh, well, Infinite Justice, but Infinite Frontier issue zero. You can read the first six pages, I do believe, uh, of this comic and check it out. This is cool because fucking a whole bunch of artists, a whole bunch of writers. Again, one thing that DC does well, it combines... Well, can I say, well, one thing that DC does is it combines stories, right? I think both Marvel and DC just combine stories. They're trying to make sense of it, but I really like this. I like the art style. I like the, the thought behind it. So uh, let's see. Written by Scott Snyder, Jeff Johns, James Tynan, uh, Joshua Williamson, Jeffrey Thorne, and more. Uh, art by John Timms, Howard Porter, Jolie Jones, um, it, pff, fucking several more. 
The next phase of the DC Universe begins here. Dark Knight's death metal presented the darkest threat to the multiverse. DC Future State revealed what may lie ahead. Now it's time to look into the infinite frontier of the current day DC Universe. In Gotham City, the Joker jolts citizens awake when, uh, with an attack even the Dark Knight never expected. In Brazil, a young woman discovers her destiny and her connection to the Amazons. In uh, Bellary, Amanda Waller plots an invasion on Arkham Asylum. In the far reaches of space, Mongol dreams of galactic domination while the Green Lantern Corps uh, host a summit of, the greatest, of its greatest enemies. At the Hall of Justice, the League joins uh, forces with Black Adam. Beyond the mortal world, Wonder Woman sets into the new role uh, in her god sphere. And somewhere in the DC universe is the return of Stargirl in an all-new tale written by Jeff Johns. The oversized all-star issue kicks off the next great era of storytelling and excitement as top writers and artists reveal what's next for the world's greatest heroes and opens the door to some of the greatest stories of 2021. This is a one-shot on sale uh, March 2nd, 2021, $5.99, 64 pages for you guys. And I do think... That I, I think DC is getting ready to have like a, I know Milestone is coming back. We talked about that in February for Black History Month. A lot of shit is coming back. Back. I'm glad to see. Um, I'm just glad to see all these titles. I want to see Rocket, but I think they're coming out with another um, branch. It's hard to say. One of the, one of the companies is doing better than the other, but neither one of the companies is doing as well as they should as far as our top tier companies. Uh, but let's keep shit moving. The next DC title I want you guys to check out. This shit hit me because I love Teen Titans, but you have a Teen Titans Academy issue number one, and it just seems like we're going to have a blast here. Uh, written by Tim Sheridan, art and cover by Rafi uh, Sandova, and variant cover by Jamel Campbell. Welcome to Teen Titans Academy, packed with both new superpower teens and numerous dark secrets. Teen Titans Academy's student body includes Shazam, a new Australian speedster, a trio of Gotham teens, <laughs> ah, so funny, uh, that are accessible obsessed with Batman and one member of this first class will become the Deadly Red X. Original new Teen Titans include Nightwing, Star, uh, Starfire, Raven, Cyborg, and Beast Boy take on the roles of teachers and mentors for superpowered teens. Their goal to shape the next generation of heroes comes out March 23rd, $3.99, 32 pages, and that is your last title for DC. Let's head on over to Image Comics. Uh, Image always has like a lot of shit that just catches my eye as far as the artwork. And then when you start reading, you're like, holy shit, this shit is either really dark or it's just really well crafted to where it's intriguing. Some of those don't play out, but a lot of them do. Uh, Nocturna issue number one, written by Scott Snyder. Again, one of my favorite writers, as you guys know. Art by Tomu Mori and Tony S. Daniels. Full Throttle Dark, Part 1. Ten years after the world is plunged into an everlasting night that turns all living creatures into monstrous shades, uh, the only way to survive is to stay close to artificial light. Enter Valentina, Val Riggs, a skilled ferryman who transports people and goods along deadly uh, yuletide roads uh, with her heavily illuminated 18-wheeler. Uh, this comes out March 3rd. No price on that shit, but pick it up. The artwork just looks, it reminds me, uh, I've been on like a uh, Aliens and Predator kick. I, I went back and watched fucking uh, Prometheus. I don't know why. Um, but, you know, it's, <sighs> there's something there. And the artwork looks like, and it almost looks like Witch, Witchblade 2, but it really, really, really reminds me of Alien versus Predator, just the way she's holding that light. And I just want to see what lies in the dark, what's in the shadows. Um, next, as you know, we only cover one comic from uh, Image and Dark Horse, so let's go ahead and roll over to Dark Horse Comics. Last but not least on our list, this artwork. There's a couple of covers for this, and it looked amazing. This is Dead Dog's Bite, issue number one of four, written by Tyler Boss, uh, and art by Tyler Boss. The uh, cover is by Ian Bertram. Cormac Guffin has gone missing. It's been three days, and no one has seen hide nor hair of her. The police have nothing, and the townsfolk are acting like the, uh, like a funeral procession that a search, uh, than a search party. If Cormac has any hope of being found, it rests on the slouching shoulders of her best friend, Joe. Joe will need her wits about her, though. 
because like any story worth hearing, nothing is what it seems. Uh, this comes out March 3rd, $4.99. Again, I really like uh, the art. As you guys know, I've been uh, writing manga and comics for the last little bit, not professionally, but here writing. And so this, let me expand this real quick. That shit, I just love. I mean, as you can tell from the from the pictures that we have, like this, I love blending. I love, you know, making things. And this just looks really, really beautiful. But also, I feel like tales where somebody has to search and inspire other people to find them or it's like, why the fuck is nobody else looking for this person? That stuff has kind of drawn me in because of a few house episodes I've been enjoying. Um, let's see. Before we take a pause for the cause, let's go ahead and hit the character. Um, and I put him in the title because there's no reason to, to slack around. Uh, the character for this episode, the title say character we're going to cover, is Adam, um, a.k.a. Blue Marvel. Now... I've been going through a shit ton of comic stuff from both DC and Marvel and Adam Brashear's story is just, I'm glad that I think he's getting ready to be, they're getting ready to do something with the ultimates. I do believe. Um, but it, the story just, just hit really, really, really deep on everything that's going right now. If you don't know, he's, he's Marvel's first black superhero. And uh, Adam Brashear was born and raised in Chicago, Illinois. From an early age, it was uh, realized that he was a child of prodigy. He was a former fullback at Cornell University who graduated magna cum laude. He had a Ph. He has several PhDs: electrical engineering and theoretical physicist. Um, Brashear was a veteran in the Korean War and a member of the U.S. Marine Corps with two silver stars. While in the Marines Corps, he met uh, Connor Sims, the friend he would later know as Anti-Man. Um, and just really has like a shit ton of powers. He's like Marvel's version of Superman. One of the, if not strongest superheroes in Marvel, you know, that is not a celestial or a being like that. And the story is all fucked up because, you know, he saves and this is what he looks like the majority of the time he wears the mask he has a suit so you can't see what his race is everything's covered up he fights and fucking saves the day and in this big battle his mask and shit get torn off and then people see he's black and then everybody is, they're scared and it's two sides of a coin uh black people are upset because this is the time where racism and shit was hot like, even hotter than now, like, openly. I mean, fuck, dude, we might be back there now. But, you know, it's like black people are like, man, you're the strongest superhero and you haven't done anything to right the injustices here every day. And white people are like, oh, shit, he could be Malcolm X on steroids. We got to fucking, you know, kill him, lock him down. And people didn't want him. They were scared of him. And so he basically, the U.S. government made him retire and this motherfucker's so strong, he busts, and Hulk, is, it's been defined in the comics that Hulk's energy will never run out. This is, He busted Hulk in the mouth and blasted him, just bam, out, you know, you know, Thor and Hulk come about this close to Adam. But the U.S. government m makes him enter this contract or this protocol where he can't use his powers anymore, and then they basically have a fake wife set up with him to watch him and he finds out he's like damn after all these years you know i'm just super intelligent i think uh let's see black panthers the like in the top three smartest in marvel and adam's within the top 10 even closer up there um and you know he's like i do all this stuff i've got these doctorates i'm superhero save lives and no i can't even live a life peacefully everybody lies and, you know, it's like, why? It's, it's because I'm black. And then she, over time, learns his story and, like, oh, it's hard to be black and I'm sorry for doing this. And he goes on this deal where he talks to the Beyonder and, you know, tries to figure out, you know, why is it? Why is it even worth being a hero? And it, it's there's a lot of depth in his character. And then he goes on to fucking examine Monica Rambeau and tell her how strong she is. He forms the Ultimates. He has his team with America Chavez and the rest of them. And, and fucking just a badass superhero. They are the Avengers on a galactic, like, universal level, not just the globe. So we're going to highlight Blue Marvel, a.k.a. Adam Brashear, and give him all the love uh, this episode. And with that, let's take our first pause for the cause. And we're going to listen to uh, the Agatha 
God, it's just so nice. It was, it was a great theme. Um, but let's take a pause for the cause. And we'll be right back with episode 253 of The Elijah Bailey Show. And we're going to get down into the news for this week. We'll be right back. I'm done. You gotta listen to Agatha. Dude, the show. I, let's take a minute. Me and my wife get a bowl of popcorn. Sit down. Turn the lights off to watch this bitch on the 4K TV. Looks beautiful. Every single time we watch WandaVision, you guys have to check it out. Um, it's just amazing. And Catherine Hahn, she is this generation's Madeline Hahn. Madeline Kahn. Yes, Catherine Hahn, Madeline Kahn. She's just so talented, so versatile. I didn't think I was going to see her in anything else since Miss Fletcher. Um, and then she s- swoops in as Agatha Harkness and plays every single fucking role just amazingly uh let's go on we've covered comic releases for this month we covered our character of the month i can't even the only thing that i'll say about wandavision is or this is a question to those that are that are, have watched it does this mean that mutants have existed in the mcu the entire time now that we know wanda's backstory that's the question of the day i kind of think maybe i don't know but let's see. Uh, J.J. Abrams creates a Constantine series for HBO. Um, and there's not really much to go on yet. Well, we know he does that. Sandman showrunner, um, female. So the Sandman is going to also have a Constantine in their series on Netflix. But it's going to be the showcase of a female, Joanna Constantine. So be prepared for that. Uh, we might... This is what our Kevin Feige produces the coming Fantastic Four reboot uh, from Spider-Man trilogy uh, director John Rot- uh, Watts. Marvel Studios has not announced the release date yet. And then um, so the Fantastic Four is coming. We keep on looking for hints to see if it's coming somewhere specific. He kind of gave us, you know, that's coming. I do believe in X-Men versus Avengers is what they're going to try to do. Not, I'm not too sure on that one. I heard talks of that like a while back. I'm not sure if that's still in development. Um, and the next thing is, um, I think Marvel have worked out things for the next three films that Spider-Man is going to appear on, which Spider-Man 3 gets a title, which is called No Way Home. Uh, Tom Holland's and Daya, and then the kid that plays Ned, who is an amazing actor who actually lost a lot of weight, and you know people were criticized, like, Ned shouldn't be skinny. Fuck that. Good job. That was your goal to to lose weight to be healthier fucking amazing but it is called no way home and let's dive into this next bit of news this was really cool because we got to see this live like a live reaction and we've been seeing a lot of 
a lot more people get live reactions to news or where they find out like, man, I got I found out I got this part from watching bomb 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 or being on Twitter. So the DC Universe's new Supergirl, as far as the film, is the young and restless actress Sasha Cali. She'll make her debu- debut in the upcoming Flash film. So the young and restless daytime Emmy nominee Sasha Cali has scored the feature role of the DC's new Supergirl. The Boston-born Colombian actress is the first Latina Supergirl ever in DC and was chosen from more than 425 actresses who auditioned. She will make her debut in Warner Brothers' The Flash. The Flash is directed by Andy uh, Muschietti. Watch, uh, watched all the, uh, yeah, The Flash director, Andy Muschietti, watched all the auditions, and I hear, along with the DC Films boss, uh, Walter Hamada, and the producers were blown away by the actresses. Uh, toughness and vulnerability that she brought to the role. Um, she did an amazing job. And I do believe Walter Hamada actually had a, uh, been under investigation, and the judge that was presiding over the investigation with Ray Fisher commented that he has been forthcoming in that investigation to try to get things better for not only Ray Fisher but other you know actors and actresses of color. So w- this is interesting because not only do we have our first Colombian Supergirl, but I did hear that there's a Superman reboot in the works. And it does call for Henry Cavill to come back, but I do believe it also calls for a for our black Superman. You know, the basically the Barack Obama, who you know was president on fuck. I, I cover this character for uh, Superpower Movie Podcast, and it's a comic that I like. But there's just so much that goes around because there's another title where there's a black Superman, and it. it I feel like the black narrative for Superman and being having to be even more wholesome than apple pie makes for a great story. We got to get Joshua Unruh on the show because he's a comic historian. He knows everything out the ass or Hector Navarro or any of any of these guys. I need to get them on the show because they can (laughs) recite all this shit back. But Superman will soar again at Warner Brothers, but it won't be Henry Cavill suiting up as a man of steel for this. Um, announcing the reboot, uh, will take fight with producer J.J. Abrams and acclaimed author and comic book writer Ta Nessiai Coates. Uh, after completing a Superman trilogy in Snyder's Batman v Superman Dawn of Justice and the upcoming Zack Snyder uh, cut, we uh, were a brief round of auditions photographed Mark Cavill's first time back in the role since 2017. Cavill's Superman future remains in limbo as the studio is set to introduce Supergirl, Sasha Cowley, in the Flash, uh, in the Flash, and moving forward on its untitled Coates Abrams Superman. So on Friday, the Hollywood Reporter Boris Kite reported Warner's is revisiting the Black Superman project pitched to them uh, by Black Panther star Michael B. Jordan in 2019. The same year, Jordan's uh, production company uh, uh, inked a first look uh, deal with the studio. Justin Kroll of Deadline reported Jordan is not currently involved with the uh, Coates Abram Superman, which the rap's Gun- uh, Umber- Umberto Gonzalez seemingly confirmed uh, would center on Calvin Ellis, a.k.a. kal And again, it's not Kal-El, but it's K-A-L-E-L as one word. The Superman on Earth 23 and not a recast of the rebooted Clark Kent. So... Uh, I've heard talks that we're going to get Kingdom come possibly on the big screen, even though they kind of did something like that on the CW. So we could have multiple versions of the Superman as we do right now. So I'm excited to see what comes with this. But uh, next, Eric Larson's aunt is finally coming. So I was this a Twitter post? I think this was a Twitter post. And you could probably go to the tweet and see... Um, see the actual post itself. Uh, Ant, a long-awaited uh, image comic series from uh, Savage Dragon creator Eric Larson, is finally going to be a reality in 2021. Larson shared on social media. The series originated as a kind of meta-superhero narrative centering on the eight-year-old Hannah Washington whose father goes to prison and who finds uh, consolation in stories she wrote. Uh, featuring her adult self as a superhero called Ant. Uh, wearing a head-to-tie 
or head to toe. No, that's right. Head to tie, red bodysuit. Why is it tie? It should be toe. See, who wrote this? Fucking Russ uh, Burlingame. God damn it, Russ, you son of a bitch. Um, let's get back to this. Wearing a head to toe red bodysuit that shines like an exoskeleton and has antennas. Ant fights crime first to clear her father's name and later more generally as a traditional superheroine. The first meta volume was published by Arcana and created by Mario Gully, brought Ant to image for the second volume in 20 or 2005. I was going to say 2015, 2005. Um, God. Now, I think I made a post about this on either my personal Twitter, which is real Elijah underscore 5000, or the Elijah Bailey Show, which is Elijah Bailey Show uh, without the W on the end. And you can actually see the character Ant, which looks, I mean, it kind of reminded me of Vixen and also um, Carnage. So it's really, really cool. And there's a character in the background, uh, Daredevil, that looks kind of like um, Deadpool a little bit. And also... What was his name on My Hero Academia, like Double Double or whatever the fuck his name was? That's what he looks like. So go ahead and check that out. Um, fuck, I think I got rid of the song. Uh, Blue Beetle movie gets director Angel Miguel Soto. So I didn't even know we were getting a Blue Beetle uh, movie. If you guys don't remember, we went over Jaime uh, Reyes, Blue Beetle like a few months back, and we were talking about how his suit differs from other suits because, you know, Green, Green Lantern's ring, you know, constructs whatever suit uh, that he wants and also ultimate defense like Gara. So we were talking about the suit, talked about abilities and powers, but uh, it finally gets a director, and again, Angel Manuel uh, Soto from Charm City Kings is set to direct. The film will be DC's First, starring a Latinx superhero, uh, Blue Beetle adds the executive docket of coming DC films to the series of Warner Brothers, including James Gunn's The Suicide Squad, Matt Reeves' The Batman, and sequels to Aquaman and Shazam, which we official I think we heard this like months ago, but I guess they made it official that Amber Heard is completely out of Aquaman 2, so we're not getting her back, but I, I haven't heard anything else besides us moving forward. Um to get the director i haven't heard anything about the script either I'm, I'm excited to actually see what they do with jaime uh in this but we also need to move on uh justice society world war ii we got a trailer and why why am i being stingy let me pull this up of this justice society world war ii and this shit look fucking amazing Oh, this shit is live now. What is today? Today's Sunday fucking God damn it. WandaVision, JJ Abrams, Superman. That's where you fucking guys are. You're watching Kevin Smith, Fat Man Beyond right now. God damn it. Son of a bitch. Kevin and Mark. Hang on, let me pull up this fucking trailer. We gotta watch this trailer though. This is Justice Society, it looked amazing. Like the Wonder Woman, I haven't seen I haven't seen a Wonder Woman like this ever. And this is the Wonder Woman that I want to see all the time. I want her to move this fast. I want her to be fast. I want her to be agile. And I want her to like come up out of the smoke like Kevin Sorbo did in the very first fucking Hercules uh, episode that I saw. Was it the first one? It was like, I think there was like smoke and shit coming out of like a fucking well or something he was in. He was like, oh, Hercules, I got this rock. I'm going to fucking cover this shit up. Okay, here it is. Watch this goddamn trailer. This is beautiful. Um, the new film finds modern day Barry Allen prior to the formation of the Justice League, discovering he can run even faster than he imagined, and the milestone uh, results in his first encounter with the Speed Force. The Flash is promptly launched into the midst of a raging battle, primarily between Nazis and a team of Golden Age DC superheroes known as the Justice Society of America, led by Wonder Woman. The group includes Our Man, Black Canary, Hawkman, Steve Trevor, and the Golden Age Flash, Jay Garrick. The Flash quickly volunteers to assist his fellow heroes uh, in tipping the scales of the war in their favor while the team tries to figure out how to send him home. But it won't be easy as complications and emotions run deep in this time-skipping World War II thriller. Um, the film was directed by Jeff uh, Wamster, 
who is best known for helming uh, Marvel's animated Guardians of the Galaxy television show. The sc- oh, that shit is really good. The script was written by uh, Megan Fitzmartin and Jer- uh, Jerry Adams and Jim Krieg and Kimberly S. Morrow uh, serve as producers. And Butch Lukic sign on as supervising producer. So that shit... I don't know how you felt about it. I had to watch it like three or four times. I like battle scenes and to see Wonder Woman in her element just fucking shit, like fucking shit up. I love it. Uh, what else do we got for the news? Okay, a couple more stories. These are all covering. I gotta get loose for this. Um, Zack Snyder's Justice League, the the Snyder Cut. Mm. Coffee. Okay, so I thought this was interesting because we all love Batman. Zack Snyder reveals Ben Affleck's Batman backstory, which I wanted to know because I was like, how did we go from babyface Bruce to Bruce like shooting up a whole room? And, God damn it. I missed one. He was like, he was after blood. He he, he was after blood because I, I liked him popping through the hole, but the gunshots from the car, them rounds of Bruce and the car blew up. They dead. They dead. They didn't deserve that. They didn't need that. They were human. And this was like the Batman v Superman, so that was weird shit. But when view, when viewers first met Ben Affleck's Batman and Batman v Superman, Donna Justice, I forgot it had the end title. Uh, he is neither new to the role of Gotham's protector, but he's uh, also not especially optimistic either. After two decades as Batman, he's a bit jaded and sees Superman not as a hero, but as a threat. But over the course of the film, that changes... And the film ends with Bruce Bruce deciding to form a team of metahumans to help protect the world. It's a ju- it's a journey that continued in uh, Zack Snyder's Justice League, and now director Zack Snyder is talking about the character. And I just the whole Martha thing just just got me, dude. Like, what's your mom's name? Well, my dad's mom's name is Martha, and your mom's about to be dead too. Y'all could have been dead mom, Martha, and brothers at that point. But uh, Zack Snyder continues to talk about Batman's backstory. He said, our Bruce has a high morale or a stronger moral compass uh, when he started fighting crime in Gotham 20 years ago. But he's seen a lot of rough stuff happen over the years, and I think he's a bit jaded now, obviously. That rough stuff Batman has seen is include Robin being killed by the Joker, but there's more to that. Um, Snyder says there's, a, uh, there's other deaths that contributed to Batman's dark place. He says, the death of Robin and others, I think, that it, I know, I know. Hey, boys, it's a tough subject, but Robin died. It happened. Uh, the death of Robin and others, I think, that he knows, uh, he now has found himself in a dark place because they have died. Uh, the death of Superman really shakes him out of that dark place and puts him on a really cathartic path, cathartic path to form the Justice League and do uh, his part, which... I didn't really know Batman needed a call to action. I think his whole life after his parents died was the mission, but eh. That's like that's the shit I didn't like. But I'm I'm excited to see the movie. I'm excited to see this four hour Snyder cut. I'm not taking a break, sitting down, sitting my ass down, laying down and watching everything. Uh Zack Snyder teases Batman and uh Deathstroke team up in um Justice League, the Snyder Cut. And we also got a shot of Joe Mangliello with a, a new, it's like he had a mohawk. Deathstroke had a fucking white mohawk with the patch. Fucking loved it. Um, but uh, like I said, Zack Snyder teases as Deathstroke and Batman team up in Justice League. It's no secret that a lot of elements for the theatrical release are getting tweaks uh, in this latest version. Uh, this time, Batman and Deathstroke are teaming up to take on a common threat of Darkseid in the upcoming release, as opposed to Slade Wilson being recruited for the villain team, uh, which was the end of Josh Wheaton's uh, Batman, or what the fuck was that movie? Justice League, yeah, that's what, what, whatever the fuck it was. Was that Justice League, or was that fucking Batman v Superman, where, like, Lex Luthor was talking to Deathstroke, wherever the fuck it was, now they're getting ready to... to to get together. He says, Joe's character in this movie, when we find him, clearly he and Batman have uh, struck some sort of deal and they have a bit of a partnership. Uh, there's a bigger enemy, I guess. He says, when asked about the difference between this approach and the post credit scene, uh, he said, I think uh, that the big difference is they're not locked in mortal combat. They're actually working together to try to figure out how to make 
uh, this world work. And I do remember he also touched on the interview saying that that nightmare scene where we see Jared Leto's Joker turn around and talking to Batman with Cyborg in the background is uh, a part of that whole theme, like the future that Darkseid has taken over the Earth, and this is the outcome. And this is where we have the Flash going back and forth. Uh, the last bit of news that we have, because this is a long news segment, today is Zack Snyder details on the Justice League IMAX and black and white version releases. Now, I didn't know there was a black and white version. I saw the trailer, but I didn't put it together. I was just like, oh, a black and white trailer. So cool. Um, but yeah, I want to know when this shit comes out. And so to have these two films, I think uh, there are different price points on this, or that might be another Disney Disney Plus deal instead of HBO Max. But Zack Snyder's Justice League is coming to HBO Max in March, but there will be more than one version of the film for fans to enjoy. There's an upcoming Justice is Gray edition that recolors the movie in black and white. There's an IMAX release of the film. During IGN Fan Fest, Snyder did uh, his best to explain the difference between the versions of the movie and how fans can enjoy each of them. He couldn't provide very many specifics, but he was able to give an overview. And he goes on to say, uh, HBO Max, Justice League hits HBO Max on March 18th. It's a four-hour special. He said there is the Zack Snyder's Justice League, Justice is Grey Edition, which is the black and white version, which I'm a huge advocate of of and a huge admirer of, Snyder said. Uh, for me, it's my favorite version of the movie. I understand that people want to see it in color, and that's great, and I really want uh, them to enjoy it in color, but for me, the ultimate version is a black and white IMAX version of the movie, which is sort of the... Um, uh, da, 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 da. Which is sort of just like makes it a ridiculous movie that shouldn't exist uh, at its highest, more uh, fetishistic level. That's weird. And I really, really love it. I feel like black and white is always cool. Old samurai shit movies. Sometimes you don't need the colors because I feel like they're dumbed down for, you know, the superhero films. So black and white might be cool. He continues and says, and of course, the black and white version of the Justice League will be released on HBO Max at some point after release, I believe. And you'll be able to see that somehow. Um, he said, I don't know how you're going to be able to get that plan, but uh, but that's the plan. Uh, he continues, as far as the IMAX go, uh, as we start to figure out how people can get back into movies, uh, theaters, and see movies, I would hope for an opportunity to let fans get into the theaters and see the color and black and white versions of the Justice League on the big screen. Uh, it's an afternoon and uh, into evening experience. That's pretty cool. Hmm. I didn't use the IMAX cameras per... Okay, so he he's describing how he went through everything, but... I don't think people are going to go fucking see a four hour movie just to see that shit in IMAX uh, at the theaters. And plus, we don't know, you know, a theater. He, he goes on to tell a little bit more details of how he actually uh, directed and filmed everything. Um, but that's the gist of it. Really didn't get no fucking information about these versions. Black and white supposed to come after the drop on March 18th. Um, so, yeah, there. I'm ready to see it. I want to see this cut. I want to see what's going on. But, eh coffee dude it is it is jazzing me this is 44 minutes trying to make this a tight show all right so we're gonna we're, we're gonna listen to it one more time are we gonna listen that was a lot of news that was a lot of news we had our first colombian supergirl Sasha Cali, we're going to get a black Superman produced by a black director and J.J. Abrams. Uh, with Eric Larson's Ant is finally coming from Image Comics. We're having a Blue Beetle uh, film, which gets its first, uh, or it gets its director, first off, Angel Manuel Soto. The Justice League Society World War II trailer is fucking amazing. Spider-Man 3 gets a title, No Way Home. Um, told you, Aunt, uh, Sandman's coming to Netflix, and we get our female, Joanna Constantine. Constantine, fuck. Now I gotta fucking watch that video and see how he says it again. J.J. Uh, Abrams is creating a Constantine series for HBO Max, and we are getting a Fantastic Four. Um, and WandaVision is fucking amazing. Watch that shit. Now that I finished the recap, let's take a pause for the cause, and I'll be right back with the Elijah Bailey Show.
Oh. Oh, I'm done, man. I'm, I'm out of here. I'm gonna go get me some coffee. Call it a day, man. <laughs> I'm done. Babel Scatter. Agatha, again, you can find that. That was the original song from Leland uh, Philpot uh, on Twitter, just at Leland Philpot, L E L A N D P H I L P O T. Not the chili, but Philpot. And, uh, yeah, that minute 25, amazing. God, 487.5K views. Uh, and this is actually, the reason we keep playing this is because this is uh, from the creators of WandaVision. They gave us some of their favorite remixes, and this was the, the this was at the top of the list. Now, when I was checking out, you know, how they created the song, because I'm a big fan song buff if you look at the show um i think agatha's house is, is actually the house from bewitched um i think they're on the the street the brady bunch lived on they did some shit with uh fucking mary tyler not mary tyler Moore, but uh dick van dyke fucking i love lucy then they made that song with a combination of monster mash the monsters and the adams family and I, I'm just loving it because that's the second last week. If you watch the show, we talked about Lady Dimitri uh, Dimitrescu from the Resident Evil Village, right? Yeah, Resident Evil Village. I'm I'm trying to remember the fucking names now because they got away from using numbers, but she was based off Morticia Adams. So again, we're in, we're getting to see my childhood good shit come back around but let's dive back into the show this is the very last bit of the show and i should have prepared for it i didn't have the music i'm dropping the ball but we're going to get into anime and manga of the month now anime of the month uh i'm gonna pull up both of them so you guys can see them get a little feel for this show this is funny you can find this on um, Funimation, Hulu, or Amazon Prime. The anime of the month is Toilet Bound Hanukkah Kun. Uh, it's a Japanese manga series by Adiaro. Uh, it has been serialized in Square Enix's Shonen Manga Magazine Monthly G Fantasy since 2014. It has been uh, collected in 14 and ongoing Tonkoban volumes. The manga is licensed in North America by Yen Press and an anime tel television series. Uh, adopted by Lerche, aired in January to March 2020. Um, licensed by Funimation Studios. That's why we get it on Hulu and Amazon Prime. Well, that's not why you get them there, but usually if it's on Funimation, it's not on Crunchyroll. It's 12 episodes and written by Yashirohiro Nakamishi. So Nene and the ghost of Hanukkah Kun want to stay out of trouble at... Uh, Kamome Academy, but shenanigans follow them wherever they go. Basically, this girl, you start off, you hear this story about going to the girl's bathroom, knocking on the bathroom stall and saying, Hanukkah-kun, you know, I think three times or some shit like that, please fulfill my wish. And it's supposed to be a beautiful girl, but it's this boy that's in the stall and the very first episode is about this girl uh, falling in love uh, or at least having the guy that she loves love her back. It's a funny comedy. You guys need to check it out. This is the anime of the month. Again, it's only 12 episodes, so you can start watching today. But Toilet Bound Hanukkah Kun. Uh, manga of the month is one that I love. And we're going to pull this up first. I'm going to show you this picture. This is the original 
Kakaguri. Like, you guys, this came out before and finished in 2010, or the last one was in 2010, which they actually did a shout out and Barack Obama's in it, but this is Gamble Fish. Gamble Fish, a manga written by Ayama uh, Himori and illustrated by Yamane Kazutoshi, is serialized by Weekly Shonen Champion as uh as of January 2010, it had 15 Tokoban collections um, that were released. It started in June 8th of 20, uh, 2007. This one was one of those titles that it took a long time to get out. It wasn't like a weekly series. Um, when I started reading, it took some time, kind of like Hajime no Ippo. But uh, let me get, try to get through this fast. The story follows 14-year-old Tomu uh, Shigashi. And let's go ahead and change this picture so you can see the... Uh, what the manga cover looks like. He plays any kind of game. He gambles. Um, but next time will be my uh, synopsis of it. We're going to read the official one. But 14-year-old Tomu, son of the infamous swindler, Yomochiro Shigarashi, he goes to Shishodu Academy, a, a school attended mainly by the rich and influential from a public high school instead of a private one, uh, for which he is snubbed at. And, you know, they make fun of him but he has a secret agenda. He quickly reveals that he is not a normal student, but an expert con artist in the uh, in an encounter with Mika, the great-granddaughter of the dean. He earns two allies in his classroom uh, and class representative uh, Mizuhara and another ally in uh, Natsumi, a first-year student and self-proclaimed idol at the Academy. As the series progresses, a darker side of the Academy comes to light as it is revealed uh, this is a bullshit description. Okay, so what happens is our boy Tomo goes to the school. His daddy disappeared a long time ago. And he doesn't know why because his dad's uh, you know, a legendary swindler. Like, he done been around the world whooping everybody's ass and everything. Jacks, hopscotch, fucking double dutching, dice, whatever the fuck you do. And so he, his dad's like, hey, I'm going to this banquet. I'll be back later tonight. He gets caught. And so he's been practicing all this time. He went out on the streets. Like, they tell his backstory later on. He's doing some division shit because you just see him at the very beginning. He goes to this class, very first day. Uh, I think it's an axe, that chainsaw that you saw. They were playing a game with a chalkboard or some shit like that. And, um, yeah, 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 you had to because that was a bullshit-ass version. And uh, so it's like, hey, if you fuck up, you lose a finger. He's like, oh, that's it. Boom, pulls out the chainsaw. Let me pull this picture back out for you. And he's like, all right, let's keep going. And they're like, are you crazy? Everybody kind of, you know, bitches out. And so he earns this title and he bets all kind of crazy shit. Like, uh, let's see, your panties, his shoes, $10. Boom, I'm going to throw it in. And then he wins treasure back. This motherfucker's running around the school. It rings like Sonic. And he's trying to make his way up to the dean because, lo and behold, the dean of the academy and some other high-ass people, maybe the president, were all a part of the same game his dad was and were there when his dad went missing. So he is trying to swindle his way back. Now, the cool thing and crazy thing is the devil's in this this manga. I'm not shitting you. Like, the motherfucker is like... Carmen San Diego mixed with the master of disguise because he has like a smooth devil head and pointy ass ears and he's wearing like a bodysuit. Motherfucker sick and twisted. He keep like uh, electric rods on his body, like, ooh, that tickles and shit. But he dresses like normal people until uh, let me see. He dresses like Raphael from the Ninja Turtles when he's in public. Trench coat and a hat. That's how freaky he is. And then he'd be like tearing it off and be like, Hey, you ready to play with the devil? I got a game. And so the the whole shit, it's crazy, it's comedy, it's daring. I think it didn't pick up because of the comedy. Kagaguri is a great show, but this was a good starter manga, and I think they read this and was like, you know what, let's tune up the shit. Let's make fucking shit up sexy and, and sexual. But this is your manga of the month, Gamble Fish. Anime of the month is Toilet Bound Hanukkah Kun, and this has been episode 253. Oh, the Agatha of it all. Blue Marvel, you got to respect him. Oh, the freaky freaky. I mean, real freaky. He's sitting around with the trench coat like, hey, boy, you want to know where your daddy is? Come in here. Come on. Come, mm, don't it feel good? And the and the, the man Tomo's like, it feels good in here, but you know what? 
you about to tell me where my daddy is. And then he converts. I can't even tell you. I can't tell you. It's kind of like Food Wars mixed with Kakaguri. That's what I'm going to say. That's perfect. That is a perfect. Think of Soma and Arana. And then the granddaddy, that's kind of the relationship there. But then, like I said, they got Sly McDevil in here. So got to watch out for him. But that's today's episode. Blue Marvel put some respect on his name. Strongest hero in Marvel Comics. Fuck the rest of them. Um, and then, you know, we got to give up to WandaVision. A solid eight episodes so far. I wasn't, I wasn't. When I got to episode three, I was like, ah, come on, give me a little bit more. But everybody's like, I'm tired of black and white by the second episode. Like, bitch, watch three episodes, just like anime, three episodes this shit. Uh, but thank you guys for tuning in for today's episode. You got your manga and anime of the month. Start reading, start watching, and join me next week as we dive into anime, uh, which since the Bucky's sitting here, we might have to pull him in because Dragon Ball Super is getting real toasty and we, we'll talk about that but thank you guys thanks for all the love thanks for the follow the support everything uh i'm elijah 5000 i will catch your ass in the next podcast remember subscribe rate and review you can find us on apple podcast podbeam stitcher anywhere blacken studios.com go there listen to not only my podcast but every podcast coming out of the studio anime uh Urban Outfitters, Crocs, R Us, Beer Me. Those aren't real anime titles, but they could be. I mean, not anime, but podcast titles, they could be. Uh, but we got podcasts about everything. Podcasts about your mama, your daddy, your granddaddy, video games, everything. But check it out. Thank you guys for joining me. Uh, I'm wearing this because I got a turntable over there. A brand new turntable. With the the very first vinyl that came in, my wife surprised me, is the Guardians of the Galaxy Volume 1. Uh, this is a Volume 2 shirt, but I do got to throw this out here. She did get me a limited edition Cowboy Bebop vinyl, and then your boy went out there and got a limited 1,000 copy only Fooly Cooly vinyl. And there's more to come, but that shit right there. Oh, you want, wait, ah, ah, hang on, let me, uh, oh, yeah, y'all know what that looks like, but, mm, is this baby, he's, uh, sexy, Oh, and did I tell you it's got Bluetooth, too? So not only can I listen to some fucking mythology or practice my Russian. Oh, excuse me. Whew, a coffee coming up. But I can play anything I want there, like the Elijah Bailey Show podcast, which you can find on Apple Podcasts, Podbeam, Stitcher. And if you sign up for Patreon.com forward slash Elijah Bailey Show, you, too, can be a part of the exclusive club, boys and girls. But yes, man, man, and Fooly Cooly had like a blue and red vinyl. And I said, no, nah, bitch, I need this. I need this gazpacho, bitch. I'm going to send you a text if I haven't already. But but thank you, guys. We're sitting at a solid hour. Episode 253. I'm Elijah 5000. I will catch your ass in the next podcast. Let's do it one more time. One more time for the road. And remember, again, Follow this man at Leland Philpot, who created this funky some bitch. I'm out One more time. I'm gonna go get me some coffee. Call it a day, man.
true. <laughs> I'm done. Baby.